I've seen many bull markets in my life and the kind of bubble which builds in, I don't think you have anywhere close to that. Because I don't see the froth in the system. The valuations are expensive, but they are not crazy. You know, there is no price to vision kind of, you know, uh, kind of uh, uh, what analysis which people are doing. So we are still on a PE or an EBITDA. bit of. It's not like a price to vision where you're not even seeing the company for the next 10 years and people are paying for it. So clearly we are nowhere close to the bubble market. Yes, we are a richly, fairly valued market, but that has to be the case because India's story is so great. Why should you get things cheaper now? Especially with this whole demon and GST coming in, I think the smart investors understand that these are all long-term benefits for the country. The short-term pain is there. So the best time, the opportunity is to buy into that short-term pain. And long-term, hopefully, things will get into place. The execution could have been great, but then there's never a perfect market in life. So they make use of that opportunity and buy into the stocks. And also, Nikunj, the clear cut is when you're talking about these demand and all mm -hmm. that, supply brings in demand. And the key thing which people miss out in this whole IPO, rally or boom you're speaking about, the valuations are not crazy. Secondly, the companies are not raising a lot of cash. It's a majority of the deals are where P is exiting. It just shows you the confidence of the promoters in their own equity, that they're not ready to part the equity at cheap valuations. Or the valuation which you feel is expensive, but the promoter doesn't feel that. Because he's the one who's looking at a five to 10 year call on the company. And he's very confident that the company will deliver the growth numbers and all these initiatives of the last three years will benefit into his valuation going up. Hence, he's not selling his equity, which is the most price asset for him today. So the promoters are actually giving a lot of confidence on their own companies. And I think that's what market is buying into now. You know, it is so true. I always use this theory called the newsroom dip stick, you know, newsroom test. And the most used word, at least on this newsroom floor, this year has been correction followed by liquidity. Nobody is talking about you know levels of 20,000 on the Nifty and when do you think we will blow past 50,000 on the Sensex. So I get a sense that there is a lot of skepticism, if I may use that word loosely, yeah. when it comes to the current market set. It's a cautious rally. Markets are <coughs> climbing the wall of worries. But your business is great. My business, I hope <laughs> it's great because the market's future is looking great, right? Okay. And as I said, you know, look at the returns which we investors have made. But yeah, the only message outgoing should be that next year, do you think this kind of returns can be made? Definitely not. One has to be cautious and load on the expectation. Though it will give you maybe decent returns, but you can't expect crazy returns what you got in the last one or two years because those were the initial phase of the bull market where you get where you make the maximum money. But this is where you can invest a lot of money and sleep all over it. And point is, they will be invested in good companies which have a good track record, steady businesses, and now businesses now to take off. As he said, the earning upgrades are actually now going to happen. We were all doing ground downgrades in the last four years. I think the earning upgrade cycle will start hopefully by next year when all these you know, initiatives start kicking in. So I would say it's a cautious rally. We will have to be smart while investing. And we are going to get into some political volatility. We are going to get into the oil volatility, Fed interest rate volatility again. So there is a little bit of a storm coming up very soon. But then India will actually look much more attractive now than even earlier. Because the kind of safety which we have built in with a lot of these initiatives and like as Doc said, 35% of the market is banking, which is now doing well with the whole recap program of the government, which means at least the downside is protected in that sense. And now they'll start seeing growth and maybe the credit cycle also takes off. And on the other side, you're seeing reliance and IT. Now, all these three put together is almost 60% of the index, which looks a little bit insulated from any volatility. So there is a limited downside there and you can make decent returns. So hence, <coughs> Indian market is actually in a very sweet spot despite the global volatility. Fair point. So, let me take a leave from your uh, you know, answer and throw that one at you, Doc. Uh, do you think the composition of market growth and uh, the profile of stocks which will now outperform in coming two or three years, that will change? Suddenly, SBI is up 30% from the low. Reliance has been a leadership stock now. Markets are no longer dependent on HDFC twins to find uh, you know, leadership. Are the days of good old cozy trades coming to end and is it time to change the way you think and invest? Absolutely right because at the end of the day what you know, I was anyway planning to come to that when you, and you ask the right question if you really look at it there is a sector churn which is happening where people the reason why we think it's not in the slog overs is that where people are worried like say pharma because of the US you've seen the pharma stocks getting hit okay but you see uh, telecom coming back they're saying that it's going to be a three-player market. The top two guys will have 35-40% each. And some sense of pricing will come, maybe if not today, tomorrow. 
So you, you, you're talking about reliance going up. People have forgotten Bharti was near 300. Yes, yes. Today it's near 500. It's a 60% in about four months' time. So there's a sector churn which is happening. Banks like State Bank of India, some of the banks which are corporate looking, which had the NPA issues which are there, and because of what the government is doing and their ability to raise capital, whether it's State Bank of India from government, whether it's ICICI through its uh, monetizing, its uh, subsidies and its uh, assets, you're seeing them coming through, you will see them benefiting. So it's not just only the, but at the same time, because the retail banking is still continuing to do well, it's not as if HDFC and HDFC Bank is being dumped into the market. So you're seeing sector churn happening. You saw global commodities do well. You saw what happened to JSW and Tata Steel. Yeah. Right? You saw what's happening to Hindalco. So some of these things have happened. Some of these could be like what Dharmesh is saying, could get into a worry zone a little bit. So you will see, people are clearly saying that I am not wedded to a sector and I am just going blindly into one sector. Investors are willing to churn, look for cues from the market and then take the cues to work. So I have a follow-up question again for you and Salah, I will come to you on the IP sure. market after this is that if you look at financials, which is the heart of the market, broadly 37-38% exposure to financials and the financial holdings pretty much across the fund is a composition of private banks and NBFCs. I don't think fund managers would like to go beyond that threshold limit of 35 or 40 percent. But within financials, insurance sector has got created, PSU banks are making a comeback, stocks like Bajaj Finance are trading at eight times book. So what chop and churn do you see that happening there? See, like you said, two things. One is that <coughs> new sectors being added, like insurance. You got a new sector got added last year in terms of MFIs. It's, it's a new sector in that sense. Uh, MFIs and, and new private sector bank including AU Finance, you, you got some of those get added. You see a comeback from a completely beaten down uh, thing of the public sector bank, a recapitalization happening. While all of these are happening, it's not as if the prices of HDFC bank or Indescent bank fell. You know, they maintained there, the churn which is happening within that, which is there. And I was talking to the chairman of uh, uh, the uh, one of the rating agencies civil retail and he's saying that I have no worries today where things are I'm not worried about the retail asset right now so, so we are not seeing worries for us to start worrying about should Bajaj be at eight times uh, in a book or not but the interesting thing like what Dharmesh said is that you're getting great new sectors and just these insurance companies alone have a market cap of about 80 90 thousand crores have suddenly come into place each yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. I've been told the combined market cap is two lakh like crores. Two and a half lakh. Yeah. Two and a half lakh crores. That's and a very India, large Actually, number. India needed these companies to get listed because you can't run the financial financial sector only on PSU banks and private banks. Of course. So actually, it's good for the India because then more money can be allocated to this sector, which earlier was not getting allocated because people were always under invested on the banking sector because of all the problems of the corporate loan book on the NPA side. And people are just going into the retail when there were not too many options. Now actually that's getting a huge option and plus the other banks are continue to do something good. And now that fresh capital has come in, all those banks which are under invested and beaten down will also get a fair chance of their <coughs> pie of the money which was getting invested in this sector. So net net, supply brings in demand and that's exactly what is happening for the financial sector. Mm. Salil, the MFI segment got created last year, insurance sector has got created this year. What will get created by the time we are discussing a 12th conference? So tough to guess, but I think uh, if you see the kind of issuances that we are seeing happening in the marketplace may probably get to your flavor of what's happening around. See, in the last year we've seen a lot of services plays, you know, the Quest Corps, the SISs of the world, the different category altogether. There have been healthcare, healthcare plays, both the hospitals chains and a lot more of some of them coming across <coughs> into the marketplace. So, I mean, so these are, you know, good flavors about what is uh, already happening. Uh, I, I, it's still tough to guess, I mean, what is the new sunrise stuff that will come across. But uh, fortunately, uh, we seeing uh, the newer and newer business models that we are getting to see, and these are you know likely candidates for listing of the year or two, are you know there across services, across retail, across auto angs. Uh, a little bit be interesting. Logistics is a fantastic play. You know the outcome of some of the GST related stuff, and you're seeing different business models. Uh, you may not have you know huge companies, but you would have a lot of differentiated companies around the marketplace. How fat is this entire pipeline? Because that again we use as a benchmark yeah. to judge 
how much liquidity is going to be there in the system, how much liquidity would be you know sucked out. Do you think bulk of the fundraising is done for this year? So you should look at it this way. This year, the year gone by, let's say calendar 17 has been a crazy year. A lot of the fatness of last year's you know uh, fundraise was also driven by a large set of insurance numbers, so they can cloud it.